Hey guys, what's up people? Welcome to the session. I hope that you guys found the first sprint text very, very helpful. That was the first chapter. If you haven't checked that out yet, make sure that you watch that video as well. So today we're back with another chapter that is work, power, energy. We're going to be solving 10 important questions from the past year's question paper. That is, you know, your pre-boards and your pre, you know, uh, your past year's question papers. We'll be solving some questions, 10 very important questions of work power energy once again guys i hope i sincerely hope that you guys have started with your preparation you've taken it a little bit more seriously i told you this in the last session also that you don't have enough time to relax yourself and tell yourself it's okay because you never know when the dates are going to be announced so be prepared it's always good to be prepared better you know better late than sorry so that is what i would say at least start now you know it's too late but still it's not that late that you will start regretting it so make sure that you put in your 100% from today itself people so with that said my name is Aru welcome to Vedantu 9th and 10th English YouTube channel do not forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel because we'll be coming up with a lot more of these sprint text series and other things to help you guys do better in your exams right so work power energy what are the topics that we're going to be covering we'll talk we'll talk about work what is power and energy potential energy and kinetic energy different forms of energy and their conversions and conservation of energy so these are the topics that we have covered in the past we'll be solving questions from all of these topics so get ready people make sure that you have your pens and papers ready and we shall begin so these are the schedule once again the schedule will be here you can download the notes and you can uh, you know check out the schedule or you can also find it on the community page so don't worry about it we have for all the subjects physics chemistry math english um, biology and for SST as well so all of the schedule is given to you so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel make sure that you are a part of the community or you can also download the notes and get the schedule so today we'll be doing work power energy the next one will be on machines which will be coming on 12th sorry 11th at 5 p.m so make sure that you subscribe to it and hit the bell icon as well people and these are all the other topics that we will be talking about in the future these are your biology schedules starting from cells uh, cell cycle and cell division going all the way to your endocrine system chemistry schedule uh it is it'll be it is set to start from 9th of feb periodic table periodic properties and variations going all the way to organic chemistry at, uh, session number two so uh first chapter i believe is already done so these are all the chapters that is left out merchant of venice for english will be starting from 8th feb going all the way to 23rd of feb hearts and hands and if you talk about uh, uh sorry it'll go all the way to my greatest olympic prize SST schedule starts from 8th Feb again. I think it is already done. The Indian National Moment, it'll be a, mo a movement from the first chapter of that. It'll go all the way till uh, maps, inter interpretation of topographical maps. So all the schedule will be here, so don't worry about it, guys. Again, you can download the notes and check out the schedule, so don't worry about it. Math will be done by Gopal, sir. It'll start from GST, go all the way till mensuration. So good luck with that as well. With that said, people, let's move on. So it'll go all the way to probability. With that said, do not forget to subscribe to the channel because because yeah, we have a lot, a lot of things planned for you guys. It's all for you guys so that you find our sessions helpful. If there's anything that you would like to uh, like uh, me to know or if there's any message that you want to convey to us, please put it out in the comment section. I'll be sure to answer to those comments as well. So that's it, people. Let's begin with a simple quote for today. The quote for today is this. Remember your goal and ask why you started. Ask yourself why you started every time you feel like giving up every time you feel like i have studied enough this is more than enough for today i let me just give up ask yourself why did you start in the first place why did you pick up the book in the first place the very first time with, the, with all that josh that you started studying why did you do it for whom did you do it that question why is going to help you to push yourself every single day ask yourself this question please why did you start is it for yourself is it for you to score 90 percent in the bar is it is it for your parents is it to make them proud is it to make your teachers proud what is the reason find out the reason why that you started this and don't tell me that sir i started this because my parents are scolding that is not a why people that is that is just a consequence why did you start why do you love studying ask yourself that question it's very important because this is the time that a lot of you guys will have this thought of giving up Right? Because there's a lot of things that you discover and you feel that stress acting out. So ask yourself this question, why did you start? 
and that question trust me guys will yield you a lot of courage a lot of motivation to move forward right anyways let's begin with the very first question taken from board exam 2019 question paper it's a two mark question straight up you'll be, you can take you can solve this question in 2 to 3 minutes in your board exams in your exams you can you can you know you have about 2 to 3 minutes to solve it but this is sprint and we do it much more faster than all the others so we'll do it solve it in one question one minute the question is two bodies a and b have masses in the ratio 5 is to 1 and their kinetic energies are in the ratio 125 is to 9 find the ratio of their velocity let's start all right guys now first of all kinetic energy of the first body divided by kinetic energy of the second body is equal to 125 divided by 9 now what is the formula for kinetic energy if you remember it's half m1 uh or we'll take it as m half m okay we'll take it as r uh, m uh, v1 square divided by half m v2 square so what i'm going to do is i am going to group up these uh unknowns right so half this because the uh, let me just change the color uh this this gets cancelled half of it gets cancelled so what are you left with m1 divided by m2 uh into v1 divided by v2 the whole square or v square v1 square divided by v2 square how are you want to put it now what is m1 by m2 m1 by m2 is given as 5 is to 1 so substitute that over here 5 by 1 into v1 by v2 the whole square is equal to what so you on your uh, left hand side you have 125 divided by 9 so that is what is your kinetic energy so put that over here solve the equation so what are you going to get so v1 by v2 is equal to what v1 by v2 the whole square is equal to 125 divided by 9 into 1 by 5 reciprocal of that so 5 uh, 5 2 and 5 by 25 so 25 by 9 is what you have but that is v1 by v2 the whole square so what is v1 by v2 oh yeah there's no space so v1 by v2 is equal to root of 25 divided by root of 9 root of 25 is nothing but 5 and root of 5 is nothing but 3 so 5 by 3 would be the answer for that question people that is the answer for the first question will be 5 by 3 i am pretty sure of it again you'll find the notes over here so don't worry about it if you don't if you are not able to understand my handwriting don't worry guys everything would be written over here so don't worry about it all of the steps that i just did everything would be here so don't worry about it all of that is covered all right i know i might have taken a couple of seconds more but yes roughly what one minute is what what is what is it going to take for you to solve this question right so that is the end of the first question two mark in your hands people so all you have to do is basically uh because they've given you the ratio find out the ratio that is half mv square the half m1v1 square divided by half m1v2 m2v2 square the re, uh m1v1 m1m2 is given as 5 uh, is 1 substitute the values solve for v1 by v2 and you'll get the answer that's all guys moving on to the second question here is your second question two mark question again take it from 2018 board exam again in your exams you can take up to 2 to 3 minutes to solve it but this is sprint x we don't take it easy on ourselves so one minute is what we're going to give ourselves the question is state the energy change in the following cases while in use an electric iron and a ceiling fan whoa this will, this will take you 30 seconds now an electric iron what is the change in energy electrical energy electrical energy is converted to a uh, heat energy in the case of electrical iron in the case of a ceiling fan electrical energy is converted to mechanical energy two mark question two mark question electrical to heat electrical to mechanical would be the right answer two mark question 30 seconds yours it's all yours people such an easy question such an easy easy question i hope you got it right now i want everyone to solve the questions with me all right don't just sit there and watch the video that's it's not that's not that's not a help anyone so make sure that you solve the questions with me so what you can do is once i read the question or when the question is on your screen pause the video solve it by yourself put on the answer in the chat box or in the comment section see how if you are able to give the right answer compare your answers and see if you are able to do it right or not all right so let's go on to the third one then here is your third question taken from board exam 2017 board exam now again people very simple question two mark exam you can take to take to 2 to 3 minutes 2 to 3 minutes sprint time one minute let's go an electric bulb of resistance 500 ohms draws a current of 0.4 amperes calculate the power of the bulb and the potential difference at the end Let's go guys come on I'll give you 30 seconds to prepare yourself go ahead and try and solve this question all right I'm going to do it with you in the meantime so let's start with the first part of the question how do you calculate power 
power is equal to v into i now v we do not know what is the value of v so i'll write v is equal to ir if you remember the formula uh, ohms law v is equal to ir so i can write as i square r so what is i is 0.4 square into 500 which is nothing but uh, 0.16 into 500 which is nothing but 80 watt so 0.4 into 0.4 0.16 into 500 will give you 80 watt so 80 watt is the power consumption now to find the potential difference use the same formula to uh, potential difference is equal to v into i so it's 80 is equal to v into i is 0.4 so v is equal to 80 by 0.4 into 10 into 10 so it's 800 divided by 40 0 0 gets cancelled 2 4 2 2 4 uh it'll be wait oh sorry it'll be not 40 no? okay 0 0.4 into my bad 0 0.4 into 10 is 4 not, uh, not 40 so yeah uh that will be what 200 watts so it will not be uh 20 it'll be 200 volt not watts volt so that is the answer guys i think that's about one minute or maybe a couple of seconds more than that but yeah that will be the answer power is 80 watt and the voltage is going to be 200 volts that will be the answer people 80 watts and 200 volt will be the answer for that question i hope you got it right a two mark question from board exam 2017 i hope you got it right let me see in the chat box how many of you guys gave the right answer in the chat box give me a buzzing this is something that i picked up from uh, uh what is that big bang theory give me a buzzing if you guys are enjoying the session and if you've gotten the right answer people moving on to the fourth question let's go ahead and solve this one so the right answer is 80 watt and 200 volts the fourth question another easy one a boy weighing 40 kgf kilogram force climbs up a stair of 30 steps each 20 centimeter high in four minutes and a girl weighing 30 kgf does the same in three minutes compare the work done by them and the power developed by them your options are four is to three three is to four four is to three one is to one three is to four one is to one four is to four sorry five is to four and one is to two go ahead guys pause the video try to solve it with me i'll also help you guys solve this first of all first of all the weight is given as 40 kgf now first of all guys you have to find out the work done work done is equal to force into displacement now here the weight is given not the force so if you talk about if you want to convert to force all you have to do is multiply that with uh, uh you know the acceleration to gravity so it'll be 4, 40 into 10 in other words the formula will become w into g into s all right or h how you want to take it all right so w is nothing but the weight weight into acceleration to gravity into h is what you have so 40 into 10 into uh, height is how much so it's they are saying that the person climbed 30 steps and 20 and each of the step is uh, 30 uh, 20 centimeters in height so 30 into 20 is a total height that is 600 centimeter convert that to meter so it'll be 6 meter into 6 so that's uh, uh, 4 6 24 hundred joules 20, uh, 2004 sorry 2400 joules would be your work done by the first person by the boy work done by the girl work done by the girl is equal to what again it's the same thing so it'll be uh she weighs 30 kgf so 30 into 10 into the height is the same so 3 uh 3618 so 1800 joules would be the work done by the second girl now to compare the work done so what is the work if you want to compare it it's work done by the boy divided by the work done by the girl work done by boy divided by the work done by girl or so wb by wg how you want to write it all right so uh, it'll be 2400 divided by 1800 so 4 by 3 or 4 is to 3 would be the ratio of the work done now we're talking about the power consumption. What is the power uh, developed? So power is equal to work done by time. Now for the first one, it'll be for the boy. Let's just take it as a boy, PB. All right. So uh, W is nothing but 2400. Time taken is four minutes. I know it's more than one minute, but yeah, I'll have to do it one step at a time, guys. So I understand, I understand that you guys are like, oh, four, you so told one minute, it's a scam. Happens, people. So calculation might take a little longer. So so convert that to seconds. So four into sixty. Why sixty? Because it is sixty seconds. So convert that to seconds. So zero zero gets cancelled. Two two four two one two 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 four uh, zero. Uh, six two twelve. It'll be uh, zero. Okay. So two uh, ten. So it'll be ten watt. Ten watt would be the power consumed. Or you can say joules per second or watt. How you want to put it? 
Now the power consumed by the girl, again, it's nothing but uh, work done by the girl. That is 1,800 joules divided by time taken by her is 3 minutes. So 3 into 60, that will be uh, 3, uh, 3, uh, uh, 3, 3, 3618, 0, 0, 6, 10, 600, which is nothing but 10 watt. So the power consumed, if you talk about the ratio once again, uh, power consumed by the boy divided by the power consumed by the girl is equal to 10 watt divided by 10, which is nothing but 1 is to 1. So the answer is 4 is to 3 and 1 is to 1. 4 is to 3 and 1 is to 1 is the answer, guys, which is nothing but option number 2. Congratulations. All those got right. Bazinga, people. Bazinga. Congratulations. Well done. That was a 2016 board exam. That took roughly about two minutes. Long. That took roughly about two to three minutes. I accept that because it was a little long. We had to do the calculations, so it was a little longer. That's okay. I mean, it's okay. It's not like one minute. One minute is a hard and bend rule. It's okay. We can compromise it sometimes. All right. Fifth question. Again, 2014 board exam. Two more question. In your board exams, you can take roughly about two to three minutes. But it's a, it's a sprint act, so we'll try to do it in one minute. The question is: Calculate the change in the kinetic energy of a moving body if its velocity is reduced by one third of its initial velocity. Whoa! Let's try and solve this, guys. Simple question, alright? So first of all, velocity of the first bar, first uh, initial velocity is v. Final velocity is one by third of v, or one by third of the initial velocity. Alright, so. Kinetic energy is what kinetic energy initial kinetic energy ke is equal to what half mv square final kinetic energy f is equal to half m 1 by 3 v the whole square all right so what will that be it'll be 1 by 2 m v square into 1 by 9 all right so 1 by 3 is nothing but 1 by 9 now change in kinetic energy change in kinetic energy is equal to initial kinetic energy minus final kinetic energy right initial minus final so initial kinetic energy is what half mv square minus final kinetic energy is equal to half mv square into 1 by 9 now half mv square half mv square is common so i can take that out so it'll be half mv square into 1 minus 1 by 9 because i'm taking half mv square outside so finally lcm over here so that will be 9 minus 1 divided by 9 which is nothing but 8 by 9 so what are you gonna get you will get it as half mv square into 8 by 9 so that means that the final the change in kinetic energy is going to be 8 by 9th the initial kinetic energy that is what it means because half mv square is the initial kinetic energy so the change in kinetic energy that you see is nothing but 1 8 by 9th of the initial kinetic energy i think that would be the right answer is that it yep that will be the answer guys 8 by 9 kinetic energy 8 by 9 of the initial kinetic energy would be the answer for that question congratulations for all those who got it right absolutely brilliant people again it's a 2014 board exam for two marks easy two marks in your pockets right halfway through so people are you enjoying the session so far 50 percent of the way done if you are enjoying the session give me a bazinga in the chat box give me a bazinga people all right so yeah with that said, if you want to have a lot of fun like this and learn with the best of the best teachers and gain 100 percent knowledge and gain 100 percent a mark click on the link that is given in the description as well as in the pinned comment section now, let me tell you why uh you know vidantu is a driving force in helping you people do better in your exams especially when it comes to online learning let me tell you the advantages first Firstly, guys, first and foremost, there is no limit as to how many sessions you can take in a day. You have unlimited live sessions and each of those live sessions are going to be filled with a lot of fun. And more importantly, it will have the highest level of quizzes and those quizzes. I know that a lot of you guys here attend the session for the quizzes. So these quizzes will have leaderboards. More importantly, it will give you an opportunity to compete with the rest of the world and see how good you are in, uh, you know, in comparison to your friends and your colleagues. So it is a chance for you to compete with the rest of the world and see how good you are in that particular subject. With this people, you have a good opportunity, you have an, uh, you know, you have an abundance of opportunity to actually take the quizzes n number of times. Even if you miss out a session or if you want to take the same quiz again and again, that is also possible with the help of the interactive replay. So you can actually take the quiz again and again and again and make your timings better and more importantly, improve yourself every single day. So you never have to miss out on the quiz or compromise on the quizzes. 
with this people you can download all the premium content get every single handwritten note and uh, check out the recordings how many ever number of times you want so everything is available to you at your fingertips all you gotta do is click on it and download it and watch it how many ever number of times you want and yes people with this i would say one of the best part which is going to help you get better every single day is that you don't have just one teacher to help you play it out no 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 with the master teacher you will also have the class teacher to help you clear every single doubt of yours inside the class itself if you have 100 doubts 200 doubts it does not matter the class teacher will help you clear every single doubt of yours right there and then in the class itself and yes i know that a lot of you guys are looking around for question papers because this is the time for you to solve as many questions as you can you don't have to run around anywhere people because we have quality tests and assignments available to you guys to make sure that you guys are getting better every single day as we go forward because i know that a lot of you guys are struggling to you know uh, find out uh, places where you can actually get the questions and all that don't worry it's a one stop stop one shop stop for pretty much all of your educational needs and with that people as a cherry on top of all of these 5000 plus micro courses and cash courses all for a free all right the link is given in the description as well as in the pin comment section Check out the link if you are interested. The coupon code is AME Pro to avail the discounts. So what are the discounts? Let me tell you that as well. So if you go for the one month program, people, the base price of that is two thousand six ninety nine rupees, which is about two thousand seven hundred rupees. If you use the coupon code AME Pro, you get a flat discount and the price drops down to two thousand one fifty nine. Period. So your you you know you're saving some amount of money over there now think about it i know that 2000 rupees is a lot of money but think about the value that you're getting for the same 2159 rupees you would have attended about 200 sessions a minimum of 200 sessions in that one in, in because you know you're basically attending about your uh, sessions for all the uh, all the subjects all six subjects and you'll have some extra sessions as well so that means that about eight sessions in a day so in a month you would have attended about 200 sessions that means that per session you are at, you're paying it about 11 rupees that is less than what you pay for a packet of lace or coca-cola whatever for that matter whatever it is that you like it's less than that in fact the party pack is not equal to that also party pack is 20 rupees if you guys know about it because i was a big fan of lace once so yeah party pack is 20 rupees it's going to be less than a packet of lace itself right guys again for your own education for your own future link is given in the description as well as the pin comment section check out the link coupon code is amy pro to avail the discounts with that said let's get back into the sixth question for the day all right here's the question taken from board exam 2013 board exam Three mark question. You can take about three to five minutes in your board exams to solve this question. But here uh, we'll try to solve it in two minutes. All right. Now the question is: A girl of mass 35 kg climbs up from the first floor of the building to a height of four meters above the ground to the third floor at a height of 12 meters above the ground. What will be the increase in gravitational potential energy? Take acceleration to gravity as 10 meter per second square. Let's go, people. Come on. Tell, let me know how many of you guys do you think will be able to solve this question. Let's try to do this. So, first of all, guys, first of all, now again, you have two minutes to solve this. Now, if you talk about the gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy, or I'll write it as G, gravitational potential energy, at the first floor or at height 4 meter is equal to what? A gravitational potential energy or potential energy is what? I will write as potential energy. Right? Potential energy at 4 meters is equal to MGH. Mass is 35, accelerated to gravity is 10, height is 4. So 35 into 4, uh, 35 into 10 is 353, 3 into 4 is I believe 1400 joules. Now, what about the potential energy at the potential energy at uh, 12 meter height? 12 meter height is again mgh itself. So potential energy is equal to 35 into 10 into 12. That will be uh, 350 into 12. That's about 4,800 joules. If I'm not wrong, please uh, correct me if there is any calculation error. Please let me know. Uh, I think it will be not okay. It will not be 4,800, it will be 4,200 joules. 4,200 joules. Now to find out the change or the difference in potential energy will be what? 4,200 minus 1,400, which will be equal to, uh, how much will that be? It will be around 1,000, uh, not 1,000, 2,800. 2,800 joules in the chat box. What do you think? I think it's around 2,800 joules, but do let me know if, if I've made any calculation mistake. But yes, I believe that this would be the change in potential energy. I think that that took less than two minutes to solve. But yes, this is how you solve it, people. Simple, as simple as that. Three mark question in your fingertips. I believe that is the right answer. It'll be 2,800 joules. That is 
Yeah, that is the right answer. Yes. So we 1400 uh, and 4200. 4200 minus 1400 is the increase in potential lift, uh, potential energy, and the answer will be 2800 joules. That's it, people. Three mark yours. That's uh, again, guys. Again, because I know that uh, you know a lot of you guys are watching the video with me right now. I understand that I might be going a little too fast. That is why I'm telling you. Once you see the question, pause the video, solve it with me. Once you're done, then continue with the video. All right. If you are still confused, watch the video one more time. But do not rush into it and just watch the video like you're watching some Netflix movie. It doesn't work. All right. Netflix doesn't work like that. All right. So make sure that you do it with me. All right. Seventh question again from 2018. Three mark question. Exams. So you can take up to three to five minutes because it's printing. Two minutes is all you're gonna get. The question is: Derive a relationship between SI unit and CJ's unit of work. A force acts on a body and displaces it by a distance of s in a direction at an angle theta with the direction of force. What should be the value of theta to get maximum positive work? Pause. Do it with me. Let me solve it for you guys. Come on, please. all of us who are solving with me, do it with me. All right, don't just sit there. Derive the relation between SI unit and CJ's unit of work. Now, SI unit of work is what? SI unit of work is what is what? It is nothing but uh, uh, joules, right? SI unit of work is nothing but joules. So if, if I take it as one joule, what is one joule? Work is nothing but force into displacement, right? So one joule of work is said to be done when one uh, force of one newton displaces a body by one meter distance or by, uh, dis by a displacement of one meter. That's all. Now, what is one newton in terms of uh, the CG's unit of meter is nothing but dyne. Newton is nothing but dyne. The CG's unit of uh, force is nothing but dyne. So it will be 10 to the power of five, uh, 10 to the power of 5 dyne. All right, one newton is equal to 10 to the power of 5 dyne and one meter is equal to 100 centimeter. So what are you going to get? 10 to the power 7. The CG's unit of work done is erg. So 10 to the power 7 erg or ergs would be the answer for this question. So one joule is equal to 10 to the power 7. 10 to the power 7 ergs. That is the answer, right? Such an easy derivation. Easy people. It will hardly take you a minute to solve that. Now to solve the second part of the question. A force acts on a body displaces by a distance of s in a direction uh, at a theta at an angle theta. What with the force with the with the direction of force? What should be the value of theta in order to get max? Okay, so anyways, work is equal to uh, f into s cos theta, right? When the angle when theta is equal to zero degrees in the direction of force, that is when you are going to get maximum displacement. So the answer to that question, theta should be equal to zero. When theta is equal to zero degrees, what will be work? Work is equal to force into displacement. So whatever is the force applied, it will be, uh, you know, basically it will be used to uh, whatever is the force applied, whatever is the displacement, that would be the work done, it will be directly proportional. So if theta is equal to 0 degrees, that is when work is said to be maximum. And more importantly, it's going to be positive work because this, the question is, if it's in the same direction as that of the force, so then theta should be equal to 0 degrees. Right guys? So that would be the answer because cos theta is equal to what? Cos theta is equal to 1. So it will be f into s uh, 1 which is nothing but f into s itself. So that is the answer guys. 0 degrees would be the answer and 10 to the power 7 ergs would be the answer for the first part of the question. Alright. 7 questions done. I know you guys are a little tired so shake it off a little people. Shake it off a little. Let's go on to the 8th question. Here was another one from 2011 board exam almost 10 years ago. This question was asked a 3 mark question. Exam you can take up to 3 to 5 minutes but it's print time is going to be 2 minutes. The question is draw a diagram and show the energy change in an oscillating simple pendulum. Indicate in your diagram how the total mechanical energy in it remains constant during the oscillation. Wow, this is wow question. All right, let's try to solve this case. It's an amazing question. Solve it with me. All right, first of all, draw out the pendulum. All right, this is the uh, let's say this is the okay, so these are the positions. So I'll call this as A, I'll call this as B, call this as C, and let's call this distance as H. Let's call this distance H itself. All right, yeah, so the mass of the pendulum, the bob is nothing but M. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. No, all right, so first of all, first of all. At position, you're supposed to find out what is the total mechanical energy at every point and prove that it's constant, right? At position A. Now, this might take a little longer than uh, two minutes, so solve it with me because I have to talk and solve. So be with me, all right? Stay with me. Position A. Now, at this position, 
the potential energy is going to be maximum which means that potential energy will be is equal to mg at kinetic energy in this position is going to be zero because why at that extreme position when the uh, pendulum reaches the extreme position the velocity becomes zero the velocity will be zero because it has stopped right there at, at, at that extreme position it stops velocity becomes zero then it starts to come back so velocity will be zero so kinetic energy is also going to be zero at so what is the total kinetic energy total sorry total total mechanical energy total mechanical energy is equal to kinetic plus potential which is nothing but mgh plus zero potential plus kinetic which is nothing but mgh itself that is your total mechanical energy at position b at position b now what is the potential energy potential energy at this point is going to be zero because it's uh because you know the this distance is h so h at this point is zero right that you know it's basically that is the mean position so h is going to be zero so potential energy is going to be zero because it will be m into g into zero so it'll be zero kinetic energy on the other hand will be half m v square but we do not know what is the value of v square find out using the uh, third equation of motion find out what is v square what is the third equation of motion v square is equal to u square plus 2 gh now initial velocity is zero because at the in mean position it's going to be zero itself 2 into g into h right because gravitational potential is, uh, accelerated gravity is going to be g itself and height is going to be h so it, uh, because the distance is going to be h itself so it'll be h so what is v square now v square is 2 gh so v square is equal to 2 gh because it's 0 plus 2 gh right so substitute that value over here so you will get it as what half m into 2 gh 2 2 gets cancelled so what are you left with now m into g into h right now what is the total mechanical energy total mechanical energy is equal to what kinetic plus potential potential energy is 0 kinetic energy is mgh so total mechanical energy is again mgh now to find out at position at the uh, at position c at position c it's going to be the same thing again at position c again potential energy at this point is going to be maximum which will be mgh kinetic energy is going to be zero because it comes to a state of rest because once it comes to the extreme position it'll come to a state of rest so what will be the total mechanical energy once again total mechanical energy is equal to mgh itself so in other words guys throughout any point no matter which position you take the total mechanical energy in a simple pendulum will remain constant it will not change at all so this is the answer now i know that you might not be able to see it because my face is right there and i'm covering the answer i know that but still guys you can always download the notes so don't worry about it you can download the notes and check out the answer you will get it as a uh, you know what to say the total mechanical energy would be mgh at any given point right so that is the answer for the eighth question it's a three mark question and it's a very very easy one so make sure that you don't miss out on this question practice a little and you'll easily get it right well that's our guys ninth question five mark taken from 2010 board exam uh question people sprint time is going to be three minutes the question seems long but it's actually a very short question uh, it's a small question the question is a body is acted upon by a force state two condition under which the work done could be zero question number b subsection a spring is kept compressed by a small trolley of mass 0.5 kg lying on a smooth horizontal surface as shown in the figure given below when the trolley is released it is found that it is uh, it is it is found to move at a speed of two meter per second what is the potential energy what potential energy does the spring possess when compressed whoa an amazing question guys three mark three minutes five mark question all right so there's no point there's no place for me to write the answer so let me just write it over here it's a bit now to answer the first part of the question at when a force is acting on a body at state two conditions where the work done is zero work done is said to be zero when displacement is zero and displacement like for example when you're pushing the wall you're applying a force but the displacement is zero so when displacement is zero works work done is also zero and when you can say that when the angle between that is theta when it's equal to 90 degrees when the angle between force and displacement when the angle between force and displacement is 90 degrees then also work done is zero why because it is fs cos theta work done is equal to fs cos theta and cos 90 is nothing but zero so the whole thing becomes zero cos 90 is zero so it'll be zero so work done is zero when the when the angle between force and displacement is 90 degrees and when the displacement is zero you can say that the work done is zero second part of the question a spring is kept compressed at a by a small trolley of mass 0.5 kg lying on a smooth horizontal surface as shown in the figure given below when the trolley is released it is found to move at a speed of two meter per second 
what is the potential energy the process the spring possesses. Now here's the thing is imagine that is a theory, right? So potential energy possessed by the spring. Because according to law of conservation of energy, but the energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. So whatever is the potential energy possessed by the spring, that will be the kinetic energy possessed by the trolley as well. So if I were to find out, because from the given data, I can't find out the potential energy directly. So if I just find out the kinetic energy, kinetic energy will be equal to potential energy because according to law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created from or destroyed. It can be only transferred from one form to another. So what is the formula for kinetic energy? It's nothing but half mv squared. Now mass is given as 0 0.5. Uh, velocity is given as how much? 2 meter, uh, 2 meter per second. So t, 2 square will be. So that will be 0 0.5 into 2 into 2 whole divided by 2, 2, 2 gets cancelled. So 0 0.5 into 2 is nothing but 1 joule. That is the answer, guys. A 5 mark question. A 5 mark question where the answer is 1 joule. That is the answer, people. The answer is that. So this is the first part of the question. Displacement is 0 and the angle between force and displacement is 0. Sorry, 90 degrees. That's why I worked at a 0. And yes, the answer for the second part of the question is 1 joule. 5 mark question in 2010, guys. Please, again practice practice whatever the question is practice as many as you can and by that people we have completed yet another sprint x session of work power energy and these are the things that we did work power and energy potential energy kinetic energy and uh, different forms of forms of energy their conversion and conservation of energy as well all of the topics done done are done and this is your homework let me know what is the answer for this question by the end of the next one the question is state the energy in the following while in use burning of a candle and a steam engine 2015 board exam for two marks go ahead and solve this guys two mark question let me know what is the answer in the comment section let me know how many of you guys found this quest this this session interesting let me know how was the session let me know if you have any comments any uh you know any suggestions that you have please let me know that also in the comment section guys so we'll be coming up with the next sprint text the next topic is going to be uh, coming up on 8th uh, sorry uh 11th of feb it'll be on machines so if you have not checked out the force wala video yet make sure that you watch that out it it was uh i know the video was put up yesterday so make sure that you check that out as well so i'll see you guys in the next one until the next time we meet this is Anup signing off for the day have a great evening ahead. Once again, I want to say this, guys. Give your 100%, whatever that is. Even if it is solving five questions a day, if you feel like that is your 100%, then start with that and slowly increase the limit. But do not give up. And like I told you, ask yourself, why did you start? If in case you feel demotivated, if in case you feel like quitting, ask yourself why. All right? I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios for now, people. Enjoy your evening. Good luck for the next one. And until the next time, we meet this is Anup signing off for the day. Have a great evening ahead. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.